Hey everybody, Christina with Pima US TV. Here we are with Andre Barber and all of his fineness and gorgeousness and all that. And I hope that's not harassment or anything. No, it's perfect. Okay. So, all right. I am so excited because I did a little history on you. So here's the question though, because I didn't quite get. Um, uh, you you were in North Carolina. What was University of North Carolina. Okay. Carolina. Okay. Sorry. So here's all I know about football. Okay. This is what I know about football. I know that football guys look great in their uniforms, and they run fast, and they jump on top of each other, and all of that is great for me. I'm good with that, so I don't know much more about it. That's just it. That's got it. That's, That's it. it. That's so you guys just love that. And they smack each other in the butt, but I'm going to buy myself a football team. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so where did you start? Where did you grow up? And what made you want to be a football player? Well, I grew up uh, south side of Atlanta in College Park. Really? Uh, yeah, born in East Point. Wow. There was a little, little uh, road called Jerome Road on the Old National. And I just had the size. You know, my mother was a track athlete. My father was a power lifter. Really? Yeah. So you came from power anyway. Yeah. People were just like doing that. Awesome. Yeah, it, it was in my genes. Wow, that's so, so I awesome. I decided to go with it. You know, fo football was the second option, actually. Basketball was my first first deal. I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, I saw the basketball in your in your profile. So, yeah. did you do that professionally at all or no? No. Okay. No. So, basketball is like, okay, I'm going down to the court, so I'm going to hang out with the guys and yeah. play basketball. Yeah, AAU, high school, middle school, all throughout, you know, until mm -hmm. I got an opportunity to play football. Okay, so tell me about the opportunity to play football. When did yeah. that show up? What was that like? What was that feeling like? It was amazing. It was amazing. I go into high school and uh, get an opportunity to get recruited, I guess you could say, and, you know, I went to North Springs, Charter of Arts and Sciences, it was a magnet school, and I started playing football, and as soon as I got into it, I realized how far this could take me. This could take me and give me a free education, you know, maybe even further, and it did. Okay, let me hold that thought, because I mentor teenagers, yeah. and this is going to help, because I want your teens to listen. Um, you found a passion. Passion, remember that. You right. found the passion and you focused on it. Yes. And then you came to the realization that it could be an essential part of your future. So you pursued it. Right. Okay, you embraced it. Okay, this is this is really important for teens because there are so many teens out there who have such talent, but they don't have guidance. They don't have the mom who was into athletics or the father. Uh, they're off doing going to work every day and not really paying attention to the to the child, and of course, some of this, some people have to do that. But to those people who have that dream, and they see it coming at them as you did, what do you have to say to them right now? You have to have a mentor. You have to have a role model. You cannot go into a situation or you know just life going through and. Uh, Veering off course, you have to have pretty much your board of directors, people that you look up to, and it could be one, it could be several. But these people are vital in your life to help you focus, and you don't always have to take each person's word as you know your do all. You take little bits of information and you interpret them as your own. Uh, that's what will help you, uh, you know, progress in life as a successful individual, not just an athlete. Businessman, you can do anything, even being out in your community. That's right. If you're going to be a bag lady, be the best at it. Bag lady. Absolutely. Indeed. So just bag your own stuff, don't steal from anybody. True. So now, here's, here's the deal. So all of a sudden, now you're how old? I'm when 27. You, no, no, when you, when you hit, when, when you, they came after you. Okay. Yeah, I was, um, whew. I was 14 when I came into high school, just, uh, you know, going through the ins and outs, and I realized that football could. Do a big deal for me. Went through my whole football career. I played about two and a half years in high school football. And the reason being, I, I uh, moved out with my father, and uh, you know, down in Savannah, it was a great opportunity to, to spend some time with him. And I didn't have, you know, uh, any regrets about that. I looked back and saw I had the, the commitment to North Carolina, so I just. Played basketball there at uh, high school in Savannah, and uh, went on about my way. I just want to get to the part where somebody came up to you and said, "You're going places." Or yeah. tell me about that moment. When well, did that happen? The ambition was always there. 
Okay. People saw that ambition in me even when I didn't see it in myself. And I do appreciate those people for that. Awesome. It was uh, around, as soon as I got done with the high school football, um, well, actually, it was during my year in North Springs. My coach, uh, Gary McCoy, he took me up to North Carolina camp. We drove up there along with uh, another head coach or another assistant coach. It's like, Jerry, you have an opportunity. And uh, there I had to go against one of the top defensive ends in the Maryland area. And I earned my scholarship at that point. Right there during that point in time, I earned my scholarship. Okay, what were your grades like? Let's talk about grades. grades. Were you keeping them up? I was keeping them up. Okay. Uh, in high school, I was, I was a good student, especially after my freshman year. I kind of fiddled around and almost was ineligible if it wasn't for an uh, a eligible credit in middle school. And then how important in those, in those times, how important was your education as far as keeping your grades up to become an athlete? It was vastly important. I had to bring about an average. My average was high enough where you know, you have to make a combined score, a combined total with SAT and the grade point average. I had like a 3.4, I want to say, in high school, 3.5. So I only had to score not very much on my SAT or my ACT. Mm -hmm. Did pretty good on those my first try. And I was like, hey, you know, I qualified, so let's, let's do this. Awesome. Okay, so now you are, at this point, how old? I'm 27. Not now. Um, <laughs> He likes that 27 thing. Yeah, I'm but how old are you? How, oh, wow. You're not far away. No. Um, how, so now you're at what age when all this is coming about? Like this, this coach drives you there, what, 17? Oh, well, yeah. 17, okay. 17. So now you enroll in the school mm -hmm. and you started playing football with him. And then how did you, what, what did they do once you're really good at what you do? Right. Did they just send out scouts or what, what happens? All right, so that's exactly what they do. They send out scouts, they see, you know, they, Go back to your high school after you get done from the camps. You know, I, as soon as I left that camp, it was a two-day camp, and went back. Scouts still recruited me, uh, but as soon as I left school in Savannah, that's when it kind of died off because I didn't continue to play football for that final year. But I realized, you know, I had a goal and I wanted to achieve it. So the only reason I chose North Carolina was because of the education. It's one of it's one of the top ten universities in the nation. So one of the top ten public universities in the nation as well. So it was just. You know, it's an aspiration to, to go there. So did you get recruited? Did you go to others, another school? I thought I saw I something did. I did. in your profile about another school. Yeah, I, uh, I had an opportunity to go to the University of Georgia, but I wasn't too thrilled about that. But, you know, you have to capture. At that point in time, I didn't know uh, how much uh, those opportunities meant. But you have to capture those. You have to take advantage of that. You have to... Uh, even though I love the University of North Carolina, I do realize that being that hometown feel is what they were uh, what they were going for. Of course, I would love to be close to mom, but you know, it was time for me to go. It's time yeah. for me to find the Yeah, and you know what? Give your mom a shout out because you know yeah. what? Um, <laughs> now, now, how did mom influence you? Because you know we have football moms, soccer moms, oh, crazy moms. Um, did she drive you and, and just root for you? Was she one of those moms in the stand going, "Go, Andre"? She had this can. With if you ever hear or know about the cans where you peel up the tabs yeah. and stick it in there and shake it, that was my mother. She had the most. She was the most supportive. And uh, Mignon Hale, I love you with all my heart, and you know that. Um, oh man, I wouldn't be here without her. She's just a guy in life, and she's so uh, determined and passionate. And, awesome. Uh, she instilled that that drive and. Letting me know, hey, there's more out there than just what you see around you. You know, so many people are just enclosed about what they have around them. Maybe it's just a, the uh, the area they're in, or the comfort zone, yeah. kind of, yeah. And it may, you know, may uh, it may not be beneficial for them to be in that area, but she she allowed me to uh, see more. Yeah. She, so now, now I, I gotta have you address young people who don't have that mom. Right. Encourage. Them. I know this is the second time I've kind of asked you the same question, yeah. but I really want to get this point out, maybe even from a different perspective. Okay, so you don't have a mom that's all into what you're doing and you want to be whatever. So you want to find a maternal figure. A maternal figure. Remember that. That's the second time we've heard that, but I want that in, in just impressed in your mind. Yeah. Find a mentor. Find someone. A teacher, yeah. your cousin, a police officer down the street, whoever. Exactly. You have and, both sides. And though you need to speak it sometimes. Sometimes you have to go to the person and say, you know what, I want more out of life and I see you exactly. as um, 
a, a mentor. A successful business, a successful person in the community. You know, I would like right. to know how you, how you got there. And mentioning which, now we're going to go to the police you belong to, I just saw. Oh, uh, Police Athletic League. Yeah, the uh, Police Athletic League. Yeah. Okay, well, how did you get into that? Oh, <laughs> I was actually coming from the gym. And I guess a person from the board asked me to, uh, you know, come out and help out for a bit uh, with football. I showed up when they, even though it wasn't football season, I just, the things they were doing there, the things they were doing down on uh, uh, the Police Athletic League here in Jacksonville, it's, it's incredible. They're taking these kids, they're giving them an opportunity to see, uh, you know, there is a light, there is an opportunity there, and they're doing a great job. So what, what exactly, for those who don't know, because we're worldwide, so a lot of people might be moving to Jacksonville or something, and they have children. So what exactly does the Police Athletic League do, and how can they get involved if they move here with their children? Right. So there are, <coughs> excuse me, there are multiple, location, multiple locations around Jacksonville. What they, do, what they do is they take the, uh, the kids, the youth, the after-school programs, they help mentor them and, uh, you know, help them create a standard for themselves um, in order to just build the character, build a great skill set, build character, help with, you know, tutoring, uh, homework assistance, and just to give the kids an opportunity to do something that, you know, uh, otherwise they wouldn't be exposed to. Okay, is there an age group? Specific, specifically? From what I've seen, it's uh, they go anywhere from first to second grade up to I think about middle school, up towards middle school. So okay. maybe around um, eight to twelve, eight to thirteen. Okay, those maybe those are yeah. older, older. those are important years, very yeah. important years. Okay, so years. that and and now um, fast forward. Yeah. What are you doing with your life now? Right now, I. Got certified my Series Seven, the CC Six. So I that's can, like financial stuff, oh, right? Yeah. Yep. And I never would have thought. Uh, I mean, I fell in love with finances at a young age, but uh, I would too. Yeah. <laughs> if I had the money. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm accumulating it, and that's you know that's the good thing about it. You know, you learn as you go. Okay. So in other words, you can be anything you want to be, but you need to be fluid. You need to be ready to move into be something. Like the water. Yes, be, be like, like the water. water when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Mm -hmm. So, how long have you been in finance now? I've been in finance for about a year and a half. And you look like you're loving it because your face is lighting up. Yeah. It's just all about it. I do. Awesome. It's, it's incredible. That's the best thing you can work with somebody other than their kids is their finances. You set them up for a future. You know, other than instilling that mindset, you're instilling a skill set. Awesome, so you can pass that on to them. Okay, I have one important question for the grown-ups. And I've heard this from so many people that I have had conversations with. And they'll say, well, I have no money. No money. All my money goes to bills and the kids and whatever. Can you do anything at all with those people? That is the question. Yes. Yes. So, for people who have no money, it's not like you don't have any money. You're just taking care of all your responsibilities. If your bills are paid for, your kids are taken care of, you have food in the refrigerator. I mean, those are responsibilities that you have to cover. Now, there's a, uh, a chart where you say every day, maybe $1, you know, or every week, maybe $1, then the next week you say $2, and the next week you say $4, and et cetera. It's just, it's just a multiple. And you'd be surprised how much that accumulates. My um, mother used to say that. Yeah, it's, it's just a positive thing. Even when you have no money, you have a way. And to save a penny. Save a penny. Have piggy banks. Get jars. Get uh, large jarfuls of, you know, uh, well, empty jars and fill them up with pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. And then eventually you'll notice, hey, you know, I pick up every single penny I see on the ground. Oh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just me. Yeah, no, I thought I was crazy. Okay. Even millionaires pick up pennies. Absolutely. So like, and that's the secret. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's those things will accumulate, and you just have to be adamant about your goal, you know. Uh, even though you don't have the means right now, you do have a goal. Mm -hmm. And you have to realize, you know, there are people there to help you to reach those goals. Okay, here's what I want to do. I, I usually get just eight minutes of a person's life story, but yours is so interesting. One thing I'd like you to do is give a way for people to get in touch with the police athletically. Okay. Uh, do they have a website or? Yes. So you can Google Pal. 
uh, Police Athletic League in Jacksonville. I'm not sure off the top of my head uh, what their um, phone number is. I believe it's 904, maybe 637-5220, but I want to uh, look that up momentarily and uh, uh, verify that. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there too. When awesome. I, but also, so you can go pal Jacks. Remember now, people who are coming to Jacksonville, one thing that has been accepted is that Jacksonville has a nickname. It's J-A-X. Yeah. And you can put that on applications and on Google and any place, and that Jacksonville will pop up. Yeah. That's only Jacksonville, Florida. I've not seen it done in Jacksonville, North Carolina yet. So. <laughs> No, but, uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina doesn't have Okay, he's going to boot up his little Apple yeah. here and see if we can find that number. In the meantime, you as a financer, yes. how do we get in touch with you so we can get you some clients? So you can email me at uh, Andre L. Barbour at AOL.com or... Uh, Hey, I always go to Christina. Yeah, she knows how to and he's on LinkedIn, me. which is very cool. Yeah, so LinkedIn. I want to spell that when you're looking that up. So it's A N D R E L B A R B A R B O U R. Perfect. At A O L. At A O L. dot com. So look him up, give him a little shout out, and say, hey, I need some financial advice. Great guy, and um, just bring a few pennies to pay him. Like, don't you know, <laughs> donate something or whatever. So, like she was saying, uh, Jax, J A X, uh, is the prefix. So, J A X P A L dot com. Jaxpal dot com. Mm -hmm. That's the police of the athletic league. Their number is actually uh, located on the website, depending on the location that you're trying to, uh, you know, work at. So, there are several all over Jacksonville. Oh, yes. Okay. So, we have different counties. Like St. John's, Duval, is it like that, or just, they're just strategically placed? Well, uh, the one I work with is on Monument. Monument, Monument is that Duval Road. County? Uh, it, is, it is Duval County, I believe. I'm not too familiar with Jacksonville. Yeah, me neither. Uh, you know, I'm learning, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, different areas. Uh, they have one towards uh, Everbank Stadium, I believe. And, That's downtown, uh, yes. Right. Uh, and so uh, one a little bit further out west also. So there are multiple locations depending on where you are, just go out, tell them you want to volunteer. Uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to help the kids in our city. And, you know, wherever I go, I just try to be a civil steward. You know, it's uh, very important that you give back, no matter what situation you're in. You can be penniless or you can have a million dollars. You have to give back. Absolutely. You know, I agree. Important. I agree. Because there's always someone that's in the situation that you have been in, that you are in, or you may be in. So, you know what, I, I hate to wrap this up, but we're going to have to talk more with him about finance. Hopefully I can get him back with me to have some people email and ask questions. And if you want to do that, you can email pmausmedia at yahoo.com. P is in positive, M is in mental, A is in awareness. U.S. like United States media at yahoo.com and just send in some questions that you have and hopefully we can get together with Mr. Bob War again Definitely. and have this great um, conversation and I just want to say thank you to Casa Marina for allowing me to video at their beautiful property and we will take a tour of that sometime soon so stay tuned to life and keep learning thank you so much. You're